Hello everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. Today we are joined with Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, thank you for joining us and I'm excited to get into the show today. Oh, thank you, thank you as always. Thanks a lot. Perfect. So well, let's get straight into things. I wanted to ask you because last time we were on the show, you said it was unlikely that Man United would go for a midfielder as a priority and that maybe it'd come in at the end of the window. This has disappointed a lot of fans. Do you know why that is and is, is that still the case? I think it's it's an open situation for the market in general for Manchester United because I keep believing that it's going to be super busy this summer. But I think it really depends on what happens with the outgoings in that position. So in terms of priority, for example, for the centre striker, we know that Martial is going to leave the club. So Man United will 100% go and sign a centre striker. For other positions like the left back, I keep repeating since like three or four weeks ago that Man United will sign a new left back because they know that Tyrell Malassi is still struggling. Also the injuries of Luke Shaw this season. So Man United will go for a young and talented, a good, important left back. Then the centre back. Since September, end of September, there was a meeting between Eric Ten Hag and people at the club already deciding internally how to plan for the new centre back to be signed in 2024. So they are preparing investments on different positions, and these are the priorities. For the midfielder, I think it's going to be based on the budget, it's going to be based on the outgoings, it's going to be based on which player is going to leave, if some player is going to leave in that position. We know the interest there is from Saudi in Casemiro, but can be also some other players. So I think it's a general feeling about the Manchester United market is that the priorities are in different positions, but I can't exclude that Manchester United will go for a, for a midfielder in the summer. I will keep everything open because I think it's going to be a very busy summer at Man United. Well, it's a good thing that you say it's going to be busy. We like to hear that. I mean, we have been linked recently to Jao Gomez from Wolves, who was actually just playing at Wembley for Brazil. Also, Edison from Atalanta. Also recently, that's been a reoccurring theme with Eric Ten Hag as manager of Rabio as well. Is there any like truth in, in, in them rumours? At the moment, nothing uh, in terms of concrete negotiations, but um, some of these players are being um, followed by Manchester United scouting department. For example, Joe Gomez is a player who is in the list of multiple clubs in England, and not just Man United, it's the same also with other clubs. Uh, Ederson uh, is quite similar situation, but I think for Ederson is going to be really tough to negotiate with Atalanta because probably there is already uh, the Dutch midfielder, Cop Miners, leaving the club, so it's not going to be easy to go there and sign both players in the same summer. Uh, so I think Manchester United are keeping close eye on many opportunities in that position, but because, as I said before, it's not a, a priority in this moment, I think it's nothing imminent or close in terms of contacts because they know that there are other positions to, to cover before going for the midfielder. But I think there is interest in multiple players. For example, another player who would be of interest in that position, I think, could be Amadou Onana from Everton, also based on what's going to be Everton's situation in the summer. But Onana is a player who is appreciated at Manchester United since long time. Same for Barcelona. Also, Barca really appreciate Amadou Onana. So I think we're still in early stages, obviously, of the summer window. It's just about ideas at the moment. But I think for Man United, the time to follow these players is, is always going to be there. And then I just wanted to ask quickly again on, on Rabio. Would he be looking to leave Juventus this summer? Rabiot will decide at the end of the season. Rabiot has been very clear in the contacts he had with Juventus. He's waiting to understand what kind of project you will have at the end of the season, also based on the manager. So there are still things to discuss at Juventus before saying, OK, this is going to be our project uh, from, from next season. And that's why Rabiot is taking his time. So Rabiot is not deciding now, and I think same in April. My information is that in May he will meet with the club. Juventus will present an important proposal to extend his contract. So you will try to keep the player at the club and to offer him a new deal. Let's see how the conversation will go. But for sure, Juve will try till the end. And Rabiot will speak to Juventus before making any decision. So at the moment, we are not at the stage saying that Rabiot is negotiating with other clubs as a free agent. But we know that Tenag has always been a big fan of Adrian Rabiot. And honestly, credits to him because when he wanted to sign and Rabiot two years ago, he was not considered the same player he is right now. Uh, he was out of Juventus project and was completely different situation. So Tenag has always been a big fan, but at the moment is not something really concrete in terms of contacts. And then I wanted to ask you about, we spoke a lot then about the priorities for Manchester United this window, but it's a lot of talk has been about Tadebo, Elise, Branthwaite. Would you say that those three are kind of the top targets for Man United? Because they're the names that keep coming up in the press at the moment. 
Yeah, I would say they are targets, but I can say today that these are the top targets because we know that when Dan Ashworth will be at Manchester United, let's see when this is going to be a crucial moment to understand how they want to use their budget, how much they want to spend for this position. So there are still some things to decide before saying that Manchester United will really attack these situations. For sure, they are well informed on these players. For Todibo, they know obviously everything being a player owned by, by Nice, so they have all the information and he's a player they already wanted before this deal with, uh, with Ineos so it's something that already since mm, July they've been following in terms of appreciating the player and scouting the player uh, for Brandt White is another player they have for sure in the list of centre-backs but I would add there also other names including players we already mentioned here multiple times like Antonio Silva like Tapsoba so they have a list for centre-backs and I think they will wait to understand uh, in terms of budget how much they can spend before going for a single centre-back as a, as a top target and then for Olise we know my United know everything in terms of their list clause, how it works, they are very well informed on that, they already had some contacts to explore the situation but still not something like an agreement with the player and that's why I would keep things open before saying that these are the real top targets for, uh, for Manchester United. Would you say in the centre-back situation would you say that Man United might even sign two because I mean there was rumours that Johnny Evans might be retiring, Varane looks like he's probably going and um, we don't know the situation with Maguire is there a high likelihood that United might sign two and then obviously there's been talks of tossing from Fulham on a free transfer I mean what are, do you think Man United would maybe look to sign two centre-backs I think that could be a possibility it's not something guaranteed for Tosin I'm not aware of any contact at this stage then he could be a free agent. Fulham offered him an important contract a couple of weeks ago, but he could be a free agent, so let's see what's going to happen. But at the moment, from what I'm told, uh, Tosin is not speaking to and his representatives to, to Manchester United, so it's still, it's still early. And it's also important to, to say that I think to, in order to sign two centre-backs, it's important to understand what's going to happen with Harry Maguire. Uh, if May United were to save some proposals, what they decide to do internally with, with this situation, because all the names we mentioned, these are important players and expensive players. So Antonio Silva is super expensive. Uh, also with Tapsoba, he's an expensive deal. Uh, Todibo, I think it could be something around 40, 45 million pounds. So it's not so easy to go and sign two of these players. It also depends on the outgoings. Financial fair play is a topic too at Manchester United and for all the other top clubs around the world. So I think it's going to be it's going to be not so easy to sign two important centre-backs, but maybe it could be an important centre-back and an opportunity if they find an opportunity on the market. Like last year, they considered uh, Kim Min-jae from Napoli an opportunity, then they had to leave the deal because Kim decided to, to join Bayer. And then I wanted to ask you about Frimpong. Um, reportedly has a release clause of around £34 million. Would be classed as homegrown because of his time at Manchester City between 15 and 19. United have looked at him for quite a while now. I mean, what's the latest on him and is there a likelihood he, he, that United could go in for him on, in the summer? He has a release clause for sure. Um, to my information, the release clause is there. It's going to be valid in the summer. It's more than 40 million euros. So the clause is there. And my information is also that the player already one year and a half ago, it was before the World Cup when Manchester United considered the possibility to bring in Frimpong, the player was open to that. So he would love to return to, to the Premier League one day. Um, also to the city of Manchester. He's really, really big fan of the Premier League. So I think there is a chance to see Frimpong in Premier League this, uh, uh, this upcoming summer. But at the moment, in terms of concrete contacts with Manchester United, I'm not aware of direct negotiations. Also, it's important to understand what's going to happen with Juan Bissaka in terms of contract or maybe opportunities to, to sell him. My United are very happy with Diogo Dalot. So I think he's going to be part of the project for present and future. But for Juan Bissaka, it could be different. So I think there is going to be some internal discussion but I don't see that as one of the priorities for the summer transfer window. Interesting stuff. I thought that, considering we're going in for a left back, but he has always been a name that, that we've been linked to. But yeah. Dallo can also play there as well. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. And then in terms of striker, what's, I mean, we know Man United are going to sign a striker, but what sort of striker do you think United are going to go for? Do you think they're going to go for one that's going to compete with Rosmus Hoyland, be sort of a backup to Hoyland? I mean... Do we have any names on the shortlist now? Jonathan David, T uh, Ivan Tony, also maybe, I mean, I don't think so, but Victor Osterman. I mean, what, is, what is sort of striker is Man United looking at? Look, there is still an internal discussion to understand if Man United will invest on experienced striker or young striker. But my information is that they want to sign a striker 
who can compete with Hoilund in a positive way, obviously, because they trust Hoilund, they are super happy with Hoilund. So I'm not saying that they want to replace Hoilund, but they want someone who can compete at the highest level and is always positive when you have players behind you pushing and also uh, helping you to, to improve your level. So it's something absolutely normal when you are at top clubs. And this is the idea, to bring in an important striker, not just a backup solution. A player who can be important in terms of uh, picking him on a weekly basis, giving him the opportunity also to enter and replace Hoilund in some in some games uh, even during the game so i think it's going to be an important investment for for manchester united so there is still an internal discussion i was asking for example when an interesting player from Serie A, joshua zirze from bologna was linked with manchester united and i was told at the end of february beginning of march that may united are still discussing internally whether they want to go for an experienced striker and even tony could be an option for sure would be an interesting option available in the, in the summer transfer window or if they will go for a young striker so there is still something to decide internally may united are not in a rush they know there will be many strikers available on the market this summer. There is going to be an incredible domino, I think, of strikers around Europe because many clubs, especially in England, are looking for strikers. But it's the same for Paris Saint-Germain, Spanish clubs. So I think it's going to be busy and May United will be, will be there for sure. And then talking about Eric Ten Hag, there's been lots of talk about Southgate being in contention to be the next Manchester United manager. I mean, is there any genuine truth in a new manager for Manchester United and Southgate is, is the name being at the top of the list. Look, I think we have these rumours because um, obviously some people at Ineos um, had appreciation for some managers. I still remember it was quite the same with Graham Potter when uh, Ineos signed the deal to become new co-owners of Manchester United. It was a similar situation to what we're seeing now in the media with Gareth Southgate. It's just about appreciating the person, appreciating the manager. So there is someone at Ineos appreciating Southgate as they appreciate Graham Potter. So these are people that they really appreciate and they had some contacts, for example, even with Potter for Nice in the past. So it's just about appreciating the manager and how he's working. But at the moment, I'm not aware of any concrete contact or interview or meeting to prepare the future as next Manchester United coach. I think he's too early to mention that is not something concrete at all. And at the moment, for Manchester United, the focus remains with, with Eric Ten Hag. So I don't have any different for information at this stage. And also, I don't see Southgate speaking to any club, including Manchester United, before the Euros. This is not going to happen. OK, that is good stuff because, you know, a lot of Man United fans want to stick with Eric Ten Hag and they were a little bit worried there. But that is a good update from you, Fabrizio. I wanted to ask you next about Scott McTominay. Rumour that he's going to be offered a new contract by Ineos and Manchester United. Been an important player for United this season. But also there was a rumour as well that they might cash in on, on the money that could be available for him. Where is United's standpoint on McTominay right now? Yeah, I think it's going to be important the beginning of the summer transfer window to see what happens around May, June, in really early stages of the summer window to understand if there will be some important proposal. I think McTominay has always been in a similar position to Harry Maguire. So are these players who are not... Uh, for sale, so it's not 100% guaranteed that they're going to leave the club. But in case they receive an important proposal, my United can consider that. So I think this remains the status. In case they receive an important proposal, McTominay could be one of the players to leave Manchester United in the summer. Otherwise, they are more than happy to keep him uh, as part of the rotation uh, as a team player. They are very happy with his attitude, super professional. So I think it's a very open situation in terms of contract. I'm still not aware of anything concrete in terms of negotiation. But I think in any case, it could be one of the players to stay at the club and be part of the rotation and also because you can't change 25 players in, in one summer. Yes, I wanted to ask you about our recent link as well to the Boca Juniors centre-back Aaron Anselmino. I don't know if I'm saying that exactly correctly, but apparently he has a 15.8 million release clause and United are looking at triggering that and then loaning him back out. Is there any truth in that? Look, at the moment, I'm told that they are only scouting this player in terms of sending people to South America and follow the best talents there. So this is what Manchester United are doing. I'm not aware of direct contacts to trigger the clause now. So I think it's also uh, something that they will decide later, but not just with this guy, with many other talents around South America. Man United will, will keep an eye out to the situation. What I want to say is that from what I'm told, Manchester United with Ineos are looking to find this kind of solutions. Now, uh, not just on this mm, talent, but also on other players, especially in Europe, to find some talents, to sign these players and then send them to Nice is something that they really want to do for the, for the near future. They believe that this could be an ideal solution for both clubs because we're speaking about important talents, not just young players. And so this is the idea. I think Manchester United will follow this way. Let's see what happens with this uh, deal with Boca Juniors. But in general, I think Manchester United will follow this way under Sergeant Bradcliffe. And then in terms of the left back, I wanted to ask you, one, do you have an update on 
Malassia's fitness or where where he is at. I mean, a lot of United fans are questioning like why it's taking this long for Malassia. And secondly, do you know what type of left back we'll be going for? I know you said young and very talented, but do you think it's an area we'll spend a lot of our budget on? No, I don't think so. I don't think they're going to spend crazy money on that. But I think they will go for, for a good player, not for a player who can only sit on the bench, basically. I think they want someone who can compete, someone who can be young, talented, but not for 70 or 80 million. So I think my United will be smart on that deal. There are some good left backs available on the market. And for Malasia, obviously, with the injuries, it's not easy. Uh, when you have many injuries, you're a young player. To arrive in Manchester United, it was a dream for the boy. He was signing for Lyon. Then Manchester United came in. was a fantastic moment for him then really unlucky with the injuries is a complicated moment for the boy he's really struggling I think my United will make some clarity in the next weeks months to explain what's going on with with Malasia and this difficult situation with the injuries but for sure they will sign a new centre back in the summer a new left back in the summer and this is the the idea of the club and also agreed with the manager yeah, it's, 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 it's unfortunate because he started so well um, in yeah. Manchester United so obviously wish him all the best for, for his recovery but thank you for that update and then Mason Greenwood, we've talked about him being likely to go in the summer for Manchester United. Do you know that what clubs kind of have interest in him and how much maybe Man United would be likely to get for, get for him? Yeah, many clubs in Spain, but also in England there is some, some interest. So I think for Man United is quite a good situation because there are really many clubs interested. But the real point is about the fee. Uh, obviously, Man United will try to make important money from this deal. These clubs also know that Manchester United are prepared to sell Mason Greenwood, so they want to spend less money. This is why I think it's the normal game, strategy game, in this, especially at this point of the year. It's still early. So I think it's going to be one for June, not for now, not for March, not for April. But the interest is there, for sure, from multiple clubs. And my feeling remains the same, as I say two weeks ago here. I see Manchester United prepared to cash in on Mason Greenwood and I don't see him staying at the club. And then last but not least, Christian Eriksen spoke out about his frustration with the amount of game time he's got in Manchester United. Do you see him being a player that leaves the club in the summer? I think it's one of the situations we have to follow in terms of new midfielder for Manchester United, what's going to happen with Casemiro and what's going to happen with Eriksen. These are the two, two situations to, to follow. Obviously, Eriksen wants to play. He's always been used to play uh, everywhere, uh, Tottenham, Inter and all the other uh, clubs. So, for sure, Eriksen wants to play and he will have a conversation with Manchester United about that. But at the moment, they have not decided anything yet. So, they didn't have any conversation to say, OK, in the summer you're going to leave or you're going to stay or whatever. Uh, it's, still, it's still something that they have to discuss. But I think this could be crucial to understand if May United will sign a new midfielder in the summer. Perfect. Thank you so much, Fabrizio, for all your updates as per usual. It's going to be an exciting summer transfer window. I'm excited for it. It will. It will, for sure. Thanks again, as always. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Bye. 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 Well, everyone, that was Fabrizio Romano with all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news. And there was a lot to get into there. First of all, I want to speak about on... Tyrell Molassia, I'm, I'm very, very worried, very worried about Tyrell Molassia. The reason why I'm worried, and obviously I wish him all the best and I hope he can recover, but I'm worried because Fabrizio just said that he thinks Man United are going to shine some clarity on his situation. It's a difficult moment for him. I'm worried if Tyrell Molassia is ever going to be able to get up to full fitness, if I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I really, really hope that it, this isn't a career-ending injury, but to be out for this long is worrying. And it's a difficult moment and it just doesn't seem like he can get back fit. I really hope he can. But I think we need to come to terms with the fact we might be in a situation where will Molassia, is it a career-ending injury? Will he ever be able to get back fit again for Manchester United? I hope it isn't the case because it would be horrible for, for, for Tyrell. It would be horrible for him. And obviously that's going to have a massive impact on, on your mental state as a professional football. You just want to play football. But... If Fabrizio's there, he's saying that Man United are probably going to shine some light on the situation. It's a really difficult moment for him. How can you be out from July, August, was it when he got injured, until now and still be nowhere near back to fully fitness, still be out till the end of the season and still be in a disappointing moment? It's really, really tough. And I'm genuinely worried that he might not ever be able to get back fit. I mean, why are we going for a new left back? I mean, it kind of makes sense and we're going for an important left back as well a really important left back that can play first team football Fabrizio said so it's interesting but I just I, I hope I hope that he will be able to recover maybe it'll just it's one that's going to take a long time but it is worrying the way Fabrizio phrased it I, I found that worrying but get in the chats what you think I mean 
yeah, a lot of people saying that you that um, they're worried about him as well. Also, in terms of what left-back we're going to go for, good clarity on Romano there, saying that we're not going to spend a lot of money on the left-back situation. Because the way he was talking about it at the start of the show, I was thinking, hang on a second, this could be a high priority for Man United and they might spend a bit of money on it. We're going to go for a cheap left-back. Automatically, what comes to mind for Manchester United? I think Doty at Luton is a name that definitely keeps reoccurring when it comes to Manchester United and when it comes to a left-back. He would be relatively cheap to get out of Luton and he is a good player as well, good going forward. Man United need to do... We need to do what we've, what we've failed to do in the past, which is scout a young up-and-coming left-back that has the capabilities to reach the top level and can do that with Manchester United. There's no names that are set in, set in stone yet, but there is... There is kind of murmurs. I think Kirkes at Bournemouth was another name that I kind of heard down the great fan as well. The Girona left back, the name escapes me. That's another one that's kind of come up in conversation. So it's not going to be like a Nuno Mendes or anything like that. It's not going to be somebody that is like really well known and going to cost Man United a lot of money. But it can be someone that can grow into a player that 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 is that. I mean, remember when we bought Diogo Dallo? Diogo Dallo was... 20 million I think we bought him for as a young 18 year old now his transfer value is like 70 million and he's like top level obviously we need a, a left back that can come in and, and I've said this so many times that can play now because Luke Shaw's injuries we don't know what's going on with Malassia they need to be able to play now but going for that sort of price tag and having the having the ceiling to go higher and higher and higher I think is something that um that's, that's massive I mean if only we had a young talented left back oh wait Here's the one that plays for Benfica again, Alvaro Fernandez. To be fair, I don't actually know how Alvaro Fernandez loan spells doing, but he did look like promising talent. But I don't know how how promising it is. I think he's a name that maybe people ran away with a little bit, but he seems. He's, he, I thought he had a lot of talent when he was at Manchester United. Talking about the striker, this is another thing I wanted to bring into into conversation. Striker for Man United, we've not nailed it down yet. But what I found interesting, what Romano said, is Ivan Tony could be one to watch and. Now, we've not heard that yet with Manchester United, really, at all. But Romano's saying that Ivan Tony is, is someone to watch because they want someone who can compete with Hoyland, but in a positive way. I mean, I've said this all along. I've said I really think Ivan Tony is a great option. He's got a year left on his deal at Brentford. It'll still be mega expensive, but it won't be, like, ridiculous. He knows the Premier League inside out. He's experienced. You know, he's going to definitely compete. That, for me, is is the route that United should be going down. And I've said this, and so many people have said, you know, that will hinder Hoyland's development. Like, we want to continue investing into Hoyland. And Hoyland will still play a lot of games, a lot of games. And he will still progress massively. He's 21 years old. I think having someone there that has been through multiple different levels of the football, football pyramid that, you know, is brilliant in set pieces, brilliant in the box, brilliant in penalties, just just all around like knows what it takes to be a number nine in the Premier League to, to be there with Hoyland I think it's one it's good competition and two we're going to be playing a lot of games next season we're going to have hopefully Champions League we know Ten Hag takes the cup seriously you can't rely on Hoyland to be playing every single game you've got to give him some rotation he's only 21 you don't want to overburden him like look what's happened to Pedri at Barcelona you want him to be able to have a successful career relatively injury free so you need someone that is good enough to lead the line for Man United as another option I mean look at the days when Man United was super successful you had like Sheringham and Solskjaer on the bench which is crazy and then you also like look at other teams like Newcastle Alexander Izak and, and Callum Wilson, Haaland and Alvarez. Like, this is how clubs work and you need that squad depth. So, so for me, I think Ivan Tony would be a great purchase to go for. Obviously, there's names like Jonathan David. There's names like Sesco, and I know everyone's big fans of them. Are they ready to come into the Premier League now and be at the level that we need? Be at the top level. Is Jonathan David a top-level striker for the Premier League? Is Sesco now a top-level striker for the Premier League? I think Seco definitely could be. I'm not sure on David. I've not seen enough of him. What I've seen of him, I think he's decent. But I've never thought he's anything special. United is United. We need special, especially as a centre forward. We need top drawer and, and we've lacked in that. So I want to make sure if we're spending money on a striker, I want to make sure it's somebody worth spending the money on and that they're actually 
going to be able to work it at Man United, that they're going to be able to play and they're going to be able to lead the line well. With Ivan Tony, there's not really much risk because you know he can do it in the Premier League. He can do it for a struggling Brentford side. So he can definitely do it for Manchester United. Um, Turplick said Xerxes and Hoyland would work. Um, BC says Jonathan David is championship quality. I wouldn't say he's, he's championship quality, but I don't think he's United standard, personally. Um, someone said might as well get Veghorst back. Don't encourage that. I mean, Veghorst, Veghorst, by the way, he had a good stint and all respect to the guy. Obviously, he's not United level, but... He's, he had a really good stint and he kind of went un underrated at the time. Then also on the manager situation, I wanted to clear that up. Eric Ten Hag, Gareth Southgate, who's going to be Man United manager? Well, the good news is, is Southgate won't be speaking to anyone before the Euros, is what Romano said. So we've got at least until the Euros. I mean, the Euros finishes at the end of it, around the end of July, 15th of July, I think the final is. Then United are going straight on to pre-season tour. Eric Ten Hag will still be manager come September. It's come come the start of next Premier League, I think it starts mid-August, Eric Ten Hag will still be manager. We know that Southgate's appreciated. Romano said it himself. Potter and Southgate are appreciated. And when you tell me Ineos and, and the setup within Ineos, the two managers they appreciate are Potter and Southgate, it makes me want to cry. It makes me want to genuinely cry. Like, I can't fathom it. How out of all of the managers that you could possibly appreciate, Southgate and Potter are the ones. Like, genu seriously? Is it like, is this a soap opera? Are you having me on? Is it April 1st yet? No, it's only 25th of March. It's crazy to me. But Potter, there's, I think the rumours built up from them because of the niece thing. Southgate, there is genuine interest there. We know this. I know this from people I've spoken to. Like, they generally do really appreciate him. All you've got to do is watch back that Brazil game to realise. And, and loads of other games. Southgate's not the guy. He's nowhere near the guy. He's not even on, on, on the same planet as, as the managers that Man United should be looking at if they were going to go f move away from Ten Hag. So, I think Ten Hag... I think he'll get fifth. I think he'll secure Champions League football. And I think if he at least gets to the FA Cup final, he's in a job next season. And hopefully he gets given the tools over the summer, in a busy summer, Romano said, busy summer, remember that, we're going to have a busy time on the United stand here. Eric Ten Hag will be the manager and hopefully he can prove himself next season. And I think that's important. Um, Southgate got bullied by Brazil's B team. Yeah, and then came came out after the game and said that he was pleased with the performance. It was the most boring game of football. I mean, England and Brazil, and it was boring. You need a goal, and you bring on Luis Dunk and Joe Gomez. Like, please, honestly, it was it was crazy to see. But yeah, and then in terms of quickly wanted to speak about what I do think is a good thing under Ineos and and Sergio, which I think is the road we need to go down. This Boca Juniors centre back, Aaron Anza. Anzel Mino, um, he's got a release cost of nearly 16 million. Romano said, obviously, he's only heard that we're scouting them, scouting him right now. There's rumours we're going to trigger it and loan him back out. But he says United are going to definitely be looking at these sort of deals more often. I mean, this is exactly what we need to do. Endrick, we should have been all over. Real Madrid got there first. And United should have been all over that deal. I mean, there's been other ones. Alvarez was another one that Man United should have gone for. Missing out on these opportunities, cheap. South American, you know, you can buy from the South American league and a lot of these players go on to be really successful. United need to delve into that market. Where do we need to get players in? Centre-back. What are we looking at? A top centre-back for Boca Juniors that we could get on a cheap deal. So I think it's, it's, it's a good sign that United are going down that road. And then in terms of midfielder, I like the fact we're looking at Joe Gomez. Romano confirmed that. Edison to Atala from Atalanta won't happen, despite all the noise. It won't happen. Rabio, I think, will sign back on for Juventus, if I'm being honest. So I think if Casemiro goes, we sign an important player because Casemiro, if he goes to Saudi, it'll be a big fee. Saudi, you know, they'll pay a big fee for Cassie. If Casemiro goes, we'll sign a midfielder. If he doesn't, I don't think we will. I think that's the way the cookie will crumble. And I wouldn't rule out Joe Gomez because I know United do really like him. And he is a good player, is, is a young player. Only thing that worries me is the height in there. Jao Gomez, Kobe Mane, Bruno, it's a small midfield still. So get in the comments down below what you think. Frimpong as well is an interesting one. He does want to come back to Manchester. That's like that that is true. But United are now prioritised a left back over a right back because of how much Aaron Wambasaka has is impressed. So we'll see how Wambasaka does until the end of the season. Get in the comment section comment section though. Would you sell Wambasaka to bring Frimpong in or would you keep Wambasaka? Because I think that's what's stopping the Frimpong deal from happening. 34 million. I think if United went there, he would say yes. 
I think he would love to come to Man United, if I'm being honest. And United could afford it. I think what's stop stopping that deal from happening is wan -Bissaka. United have a choice. Do we keep wan -Bissaka and 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 or do we cash in on him and go and buy Frimpong? Let me know what you think. It's a risk because Frimpong is a bit of a wing back and wan has got that unique skill set. Let me know what you think. I think if I had to pick, oh, it's a tough one, but I think I would go for Frimpong. But let me know what you think. Please put all your comments in down below. Any other questions you want asking in the future, let me know. Also, please hit a like on the video. It is much appreciated too. And yeah, everyone, international break's nearly over now. It's a good transfer update. Busy summer is on for Manchester United. I'm going to love you and leave you here. We've got a lot of good shows coming up throughout this week, by the way. Got some nice interviews coming. Got a little forum coming midweek. Mark will be on the 8pm show later. Stay tuned. Thank you to Fabrizio, as always. And I will see you on the next one.